that you weren't expecting this to be the show to kick off the new year. No, it wasn't voted on by the Patreons, but you know what? Cheaper pop culture is not the kind of show that waits for the enemy to attack or the Patreons to vote or something. Because Cheaper Pop Culture is the show that strikes first, strikes hard, and has played the game no mercy, sir. And with season three of Cobra Kai dropping and with Glow getting canceled, I need to let Netflix know that I'm not done with you yet. Not only did you inherit Cobra Kai from YouTube, but with that, you also inherited their innate love for professional wrestling. So with that being said, it's time for you, Cobra Kai, to come back home to YouTube and also debut on Cheaper Pop Culture. Now, before we continue, definite spoilers for this show, including Season 3. And if you haven't seen Season 3 yet, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing? Going out, partying, and going to work like a loser? Why don't you just stay at home and watch TV like a man, you freaking nerd? Alright, so there's definitely no denying that somebody who works on Cobra Kai is definitely a huge wrestling fan because they sprinkle references out throughout the entire series, and if your entire show is based off of the 80s phenomenon that is the Karate Kid, well, being a big wrestling fan probably goes hand in hand with that too. Let's start with the beginning of the second season, where Chris and Assface, I don't know the character's real name, have old school WWF t-shirts on. And seeing that they're supposed to be kids but are still rocking an Ultimate Warrior shirt and a Golden Era WrestleMania logo, well, I think that just goes to show you that even fictional wrestling fans prefer old school WWF to modern WWE. Then, moving on to Season 3, Assface, whose real name is Mitch, see, I fooled you. You thought I didn't know the name, but I did. I wonder how many of you are deleting your comments right now. Smug sons of bitches. Anyway, Mitch mentions Chris Jericho and Armbar, which is then followed up on later in the season when Chris talks about how their dojos just won't get along, like the British Bulldogs and the Hart Foundation. To which, Assface says that they were allies, only for Chris to remind them that the teams went against each other at WrestleMania 3, which was actually a six-man tag with Dangerous Danny Davis partnering with the Hart Foundation and Tito Santana with the Bulldogs. But I digress. However, that's not all, because also littered throughout the series are several professional wrestling moves. Like with Daniel doing a dragon screw leg whip to Chosen in Okinawa, Kyler using his wrestling background to suplex ass face. Seriously, Mitch, you're supposed to be a wrestling fan. How did you fall for something so easy? And also Daniel and Johnny doing their own variation of total elimination. Now, if all this still isn't enough for you, let's get really deep into this. Because as far as I'm concerned, the biggest piece of proof that there is definitely a smark in the higher-ups of Cobra Kai is when it comes to their understanding of heel and face turns. Like with my absolute favorite moment in the entire series, my man Hawk making a full-on face turn and reuniting the tag team of the Binary Brothers, Eli and Dimitri. Am I marking out just a bit for this? Yes, yes I am. Did I also make this video just to capitalize on the popularity of Cobra Kai? Yes, yes I did. And was this also my excuse just to talk about a bunch of stuff I was really excited about? Yes, yes it was. And you know what? I've got no problem with that. Because just remember, when it comes to cheaper pop culture, a video approaches you here on your feed or in the suggestions. It is the algorithm, and an algorithm deserves no mercy. What is the problem, Mr. or Mrs. or Miss or Doctor or First Lieutenant? I don't know, whoever you are. You know what? I like Cobra Kai. Uh, bye. <laughs> 